afternoon or whatever the hour is at the time you're watching this. This is Macomb Mayor Mike Inman reporting uh, from the Macomb City uh, Council Chambers here at City Hall. The latest update on Friday, the 5th of February, 2021 on the COVID pandemic here in Macomb and McDonough County. Um, as usual, we'll start off with some numbers to share with you. And uh, these numbers are a little bit dated. They were from uh, uh, Thursday, so yesterday. <clears throat> from the McDonough County Health Department. They're reporting a total of 2,243 confirmed cases since the onset of the pandemic. Uh, they, the, the new case counts have been noticeably lower over the last week to 10 days than they had been trending. Uh, so the most recent additions were only three new cases uh, with uh, four new uh, recovered. So actually the number of recovering cases as outnumbering new cases. So that's definitely headed in the right, right direction. There, uh, as of yesterday, were a total of 44 active cases in the county with 2,150 recovered. And uh, of course, um, unfortunately, 49 uh, deaths uh, reported. So again, that information is from the McDonough County Health Department and some new information that they're sharing, which I am very appreciative of. They're reporting um, the number of vaccines that have been administered here in McDonough County. Now, keep in mind, this will be total vaccines, whether that they were administered by the hospital or the health department or by Walgreens and or um, CVS to the, those folks living in uh, long-term care facilities in the county. And of course, you know where those are at. So all those combined are for a, a total of 3,000 doses as of yesterday, Thursday the 4th of COVID-19 vaccine had been administered in McDonough County. Of those, 738 people had been fully vaccinated. In other words, they'd received both doses. So the numbers are definitely trending in the right direction, slow but sure. And keep in mind as we talk about vaccines here in the next few minutes, the thing to remember is, is that still a limited number of those, not just here in McDonough County, not just here in Illinois, but across the United States, um, and we'll talk more a little bit about that, but we do need to keep that in mind. We're working with a limited supply of vaccines and, and thankfully a good number of people wanting to take advantage of uh, being vaccinated. So uh, that's just some information we need to keep in mind as we go forward. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, the McDonough County Health Department uh, in cooperation with uh, McDonough District Hospital opened up their uh, vaccination, COVID-19 vaccination clinics on the campus of uh, MDH in the Health Services Building earlier this week. <clears throat> All of the, uh, the, those times available for particularly uh, the 65 and older group were taken up very quickly. They were also vaccinating other essential workers. And you can check the Illinois Department of Public Health website at the website located at the bottom of your screen now. And it'll tell you exactly who uh, and, and what those 1A and 1B groups, groups look like. So 1A was first. We're currently 1A plus 1B now, again, with the emphasis in 1B being on those 65 and older, and then essential workers. And you're gonna say, well, am I an essential worker? Uh, those guidelines were set up by the Centers for Disease Control along with the Illinois Department of Public Health. So take a look at those. That'll give you an idea of where you fit or if you fit in those categories right now and the uh, likelihood that you, the sooner or later you'll be able to get in the queue for a uh, vaccine. With that said, uh, all the, the uh, available slots for this particular week uh, were taken up very quickly when the health department's website came up online early Monday. Uh, they did about midweek, uh, the health department did open up additional uh, slots for uh, folks in the 65 and older category on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays for the balance of this month, that month of February. Those two were, were filled up fairly quickly, not quite as quickly as the first round, but they were, um, they, those slots are all full. And you may have experienced some frustration trying to get a hold of um, the, that information either online. It did take about nine clicks on the website. Uh, and again, we'll give you those website locations here in a minute. To, because there'll be future opportunities coming up sooner than later for, for you to, to uh, make additional appointments with the, with the clinics that are run by the health department. But there was also some frustration that we got calls here at City Hall. I'm sure other entities in the city and the county got some calls from concerned citizens um, that they uh, were having some difficulty getting through to the, the, the call center that the health department had set up. Um, and talking with members from the health department, I think Monday they reported they had uh, over 300 calls they fielded from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. that day. 
Uh, they um, had a limited number of call takers available to uh, man those phones. And quite honestly, I think the demand far outstripped their ability to uh, man, excuse me, answer those lines. And again, I think there was some frustration that people in the community were feeling. I, I understand that. Um, I think the health department's doing uh, a good job of trying to work through that. Um, and we'll keep our eyes open and our ears peeled. And so when the health department does announce there's additional um, uh, tests, excuse me, uh, vaccination uh, dates opening up, that they'll uh, ramp that call center back up and then there'll be some ability to get back online and book those yourself. So if you look at the bottom of your screen right now, you'll see the three websites. They all connect to the same portal eventually, uh, but it would allow you access from a couple of different ISP addresses to get into those so that um, when they are opened up again uh, sooner than later, you'll be able to have some options. Again, those three are located at the bottom of your screen now, and they'll be up there for a few seconds so that you don't need to worry about, oh, I can't write it down fast enough. That's not a problem. So again, we would stress uh, uh, continued patience. I completely understand the anxiety that so many people are, are feeling with this process and they're very much wanting to get the vaccine so that they can not only protect themselves but others and their families. We completely understand that. And again, understand the anxiety is high. So um, we'd ask for uh, very respectfully your continued patience. Um, and again, be mindful of the fact that uh, part of the equation in the formula here does rely on the available continued availability of the vaccines. Now, to that end, you may have um, been aware of some national news here in the last um, 48 hours or so. It appears that Johnson & Johnson is very close to uh, receiving emergency authorization, emergency youth authorization, youth, ah, spit it out, youth authorization from the Food and Drug Administration for their one-shot vaccine. And again, they appear to have uh, enough, or a substantial, I should say, a substantial stockpile of those vaccines ready to deploy out into the uh, country in Illinois and eventually here fairly quickly once they receive that approval. And then AstraZeneca is also uh, seeking uh, emergency use authorization as well. And so again, we still have Pfizer, Moderna, and as more vaccines come on board, there's a, the high probability that there'll be m much more availability and much more opportunities to get vaccinated. So uh, remain, we'd ask you to remain hopeful, remain patient, and uh, we're, we're starting to, again, see some light at the end of the tunnel. Now, remember last time we met, we talked about the three legs of the stool that are standing, so we'd remind you of those again. First of all, uh, wearing a face uh, covering, social distancing, washing of hands should be part of your everyday routine now. Uh, that's, that's one leg of the stool. The other leg is uh, vaccinations. We've talked about that today, got you up to speed as best we have it here today. But testing is still uh, part, very essential part of this whole um, process of trying to mitigate the virus as best we can. So a couple of things on that front today. First, McDonough District Hospital uh, announced earlier today that due to some inclement weather that's expected to take place, particularly this weekend, um, Tomorrow on Saturday, uh, Saturday the 6th, their drive-in screening will be as normal. But on Sunday, since there's a, some weather coming our way, and we'll talk a little bit about that before we uh, part this afternoon. Um, but on Sunday, February 7th, individuals needing COVID testing can check in at the MDH emergency department. In other words, it'd be a little too cold to be running through their tent operation. So they'd ask that patients who enter the emergency department for just a COVID-19 test, they won't, first of all, they won't get charged for an ER visit, but the, that's where they should go for COVID testing. So still available. Times are the same uh, for Sunday and uh, there'll be a designated waiting area inside the de emergency department for those who needed COVID testing. So Sunday, again, uh, be a little bit of uh, change. Um, and if they if they're gonna be monitoring the weather through the balance of the weekend, if they need to move that uh, into that same location for maybe an extended few days beyond Sunday, they'll let the community know. So Saturday is normal, but Sunday, uh, go to the MDH emergency department, be no charge, no ER charge. You'll go in, let them know you're there for the COVID test. They'll have you a special waiting area. You'll get tested and, and be on your way. So we'd also remind you that uh, the Illinois Department of Public Health is uh, going to be here uh, for some additional dates. Uh, they were here today. 
excuse me, yesterday. They'll be here again Monday. Uh, that's at the Tanner Circle and the Q lot on the campus of Western Illinois University. It's available for the entire community, the entire county for that matter. And we'll, I think they're not going to discriminate if you're just passing through Macomb because you work here but live somewhere else. They'll be happy to test you. So that's the 8th, Monday the 8th. Uh, the 20, excuse me, the 15th, the 15th, and the, and the 17th. Those dates are at the bottom of your screen now, 8, to, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on February 8th, the 15th, and the 17th. Uh, Q lot, Tanner Circle. Uh, it's minimally invasive. It's very, very efficient. And you'll get the, they promise the test within four to seven days. And again, I think you've heard me say, my personal experience is it's usually about 36 hours max. So, um, Avail yourself of the testing. You can still get tested at CVS through their uh, online portal and set up an appointment. Um, but again, a, a testing is con and continuing to be essential in this as well as those other mitigation uh, practices we've talked about. And then eventually as we get more people vaccinated, everything will come together nicely. And yeah, that tunnel, light at the end of the tunnel will continue to get brighter. So uh, very much uh, looking forward to that. We talked about a little bit earlier, the next couple of days and maybe the next 10 days, we're looking at good old Midwestern winter conditions. So um, keep in mind that we're expecting some below uh, zero temperatures, overnight temperatures during the next seven to 10 days. You know, that means taking precautions to ensure that your heating systems are in good shape, your car is necessarily winterized if you're traveling, and you need to take care of your pets that are uh, traditionally outside uh, maybe you want to consider some temporary indoor accommodations, particularly overnight for those outdoor pets. And, you know, take good precautions for yourself, cover up. You should be wearing a face covering anyway, so that's, that's already check on your list, but uh, make sure that you're taking precautions uh, to prevent uh, frostbite and hypothermia if you're going to be out and in, engaging in. We're expecting some snow in the next uh, 36 hours, uh, particularly as maybe as during the daytime hours on Saturday into early Saturday evening, maybe upwards of two to three inches, and then followed by some rather significantly colder temperatures. Uh, again, uh, below zero for many nights coming up in the next seven to 10 days. So take those necessary precautions across the board. We would remind you also that uh, there are uh, still opportunities for small businesses to participate in the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunities Paycheck Protection Program. PPP webinars are coming up. You can check the uh, Chamber of Commerce website. That website's at the bottom or the downtown Macomb website. Those webinars are listed uh, on both those websites. There'll be a webinar uh, several next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week. That's the 9th, 10th, and the 11th. And then the following Wednesday and Friday, the 17th and the 19th, and then the last Tuesday of the, the month, the 23rd. Those, again, that information for our small business owners to uh, get a little more knowledge about uh, the Pay Check Protection Program available through the Chamber's website and the downtown Macomb uh, website. So a lot of information to share with you today. Thank you for um, taking the time to get updated. And as, you, or as, uh, as, we've, as uh, we've shared with you many times, if there, uh, there's some concerns you have, some questions you have, um, you've got anything that we've talked about today, please feel free to call the numbers listed uh, at the end of this um, video today here at City Hall, whether it be the Mayor's Office, the Office of Community Development, City Clerk's Office. We'll be happy to try to answer questions for you or to head you in the right direction where we can be as much help as possible. So for now, that's it. Thank you. Uh, stay warm. Mm -hmm.